Hi, and here is a video about blending modes. So I wanted to start this video with the color dodge blending mode. You can find it on Krita in the lighten category of blending mode. And it's one of the most fun blending mode around and that's why I start with it. I do with this blending mode all my lighting effects, so all the light, direct point light, glows, coronas, lasers, neons and all the magic stuff. I usually get better results with this blending mode when I select a very dark and saturated colors. And uh, I apply also many little strokes till I obtain a result with a nice corona around. You can also use this blending mode applied on a big brush to color the air or to color the atmospheric effect on your canvas. So it can be a light source outside your canvas and you can symbolize it by a subtle gradient applying on the bottom or on the top right or on the diagonal of your piece. A last advice for this blending mode is to not overuse it because if you use it too much it will create very strong saturation point everywhere and attract eyes and also destroy your piece with too much saturated color point everywhere. So be very subtle, uh, in this demo I do it very very strong to show you some visual feedback and to let you understand what the blending mode is doing but be very subtle with it. It can really enhance your piece as it can ruin it if you do it too much. The second blending mode I want to introduce to you is the color blending mode and it's a blending mode you can find on Krita under the HSY category and this blending mode have a very obvious mission. It change the color but only the color so it will protect the value under your brush but just change the color. Uh, this is what does the default color blending mode and I use it to color my black and white preparation when I do an artwork, we call it grisaille uh, here but I don't know how to pronounce it in English. Uh, the result of your colorization might look a bit dull and grayish but that's normal because it's very hard to predict when you paint your black and white preparation how the color blending mode will really react over your uh, final results. So I don't use it as the end tool, you'll see that I do another pass with another blending mode I will present just after this one, but uh, it's very good to do a first pass and do some colorization draft. It's also a very good blending mode when you do a speed painting or when you do a painting and you have some saturation spot as on this dragon, a uh, very blue saturated spot and you want to remove them. So you just select the color blending mode and you select some gray color and with gray color it will be a perfect blending mode to do any job of desaturation. So just reduce the opacity and do a bit of desaturation. And my final example of this Nyan Cat picture on the right is to show you that I use sometime another blending mode who do also the color. It's under the HSL, it's named Color HSL. And this blending mode have a priority on color more than on the value. So I can paint more my model under more like a plaster model, more like a sculpture and then apply the color on the top. So you can see on this rainbow that I, I painted it like a drapery and uh, I apply the color yellow, orange, red. So depending how you do your grisaille or your black and white artwork, if you do it with uh, thinking about the value or if you do it like a plaster sculpture, uh, you will select the color blending mode or the color HSL blending mode to, to make a, a better colorization. But still keep in mind that it's just a draft and you will need another pass of another blending mode if you want to write the contrast and make the saturation and that's what invites us to discover the next blending mode. And the next blending mode is also probably my favorite one. It's the overlay blending mode 
and you can find it on Krita under the Mix category. The overlay blending mode is a conditional blending mode, so it's combined two blending modes, a darkening one, if you select a color under the gray 50%, and a brightening one, if you select a color over the gray 50%. My primary usage of this uh, blending mode is to enhance the contrast or vivid a color or boost the color uh, of a zone when I have a hard work a bit dull or with greyish aspect. This syndrome of a greyish and dull artwork happens a lot with my method, so I'm very dependent of a very good overlay blending mode and uh, as you can see on this little pupy dog, uh, I can really boost uh, the, the color everywhere or write the contrast or crease the shadow or boost the light uh, on the volume of this uh, little creature. Another usage I have with this blending mode is of course to just overlay a textures. So you just drag and drop a textures, black and white, and put the blending mode on your layer to the overlay blending mode. Because this blending mode is conditional, all the dark part of your texture will be displayed on your volume and all the highlight part will also be displayed on your volume. Uh, only the 50% grey will remain transparent, so you will have some rich texture effect, so some rich little grain on the highlight and some rich little grain and crease on the dark part. And it's really convenient when you have like on this artwork, just a simple cube and you overlay a pattern a bit more complex on it. My third usage with the overlay blending mode is to simulate the subsurface scattering. It's an effect when the light is coming through a material and you have on the shadow a very saturated part. So I guess now you better understand why it's one of my favorite blending modes because there is so much color correction you can do with it. It's easy to fix a light, it's easy to fix a shadow, but just be careful because you can also destroy an artwork by making the color overburn, the color too saturated and uh, the light too dodgy. Another blending mode I use a lot is the lighten blending mode and you can simply find it on Krita category lighten. Lighten is a comparative blending mode. So Lighten will paint only if the value on the canvas is darker than the value on your brush. This simple property to Lighten only will help you a lot to keep the object into the distance and uh, to just uh, shut down a bit uh, all the objects with a too strong value in your artwork. So it's a blending mode to mostly manage the value of your artwork and uh, to make sure that your main subject, the character or the main object of your composition is uh, not surrounded by stronger value around. And the last blending mode I want to present in this video is the Multiply Blending Mode. It's a blending mode you will find on the Krita interface within the Arithmetic category. The Multiply Blending Mode is very popular among all the digital painters because it's probably the effect that is the more near of the traditional oil glazing painting technique. I'm using here the multiply blending mode in many situations. The first one is when I need to apply some pattern at the end of the painting. And uh, like on this painting, the stripe on the arm of paper or the stripes on the, the little cat. Uh, I also use uh, multiply when I need to apply a very large casted shadow over a scene, like uh, this example in the middle. And uh, my last usage of uh, multiply blending mode is when I need to paint a tattoo or when I need to do some makeup or inject a bit of uh, blood under the skin uh, on a portrait. And that's how I finish this video. I hope you learned something about the blending mode and you will use them more often in your artwork. If you have another tips, uh, don't hesitate to share them on the comments. If you have questions, also don't hesitate to comment on this video. 
as you can probably hear, it's still very difficult for me to do video with voiceover, but I try to improve and I try to keep doing it. So thanks again for watching.